Good morning, Mrs. Lojan. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Hmm. Uh, last time I was here observing your class, oh, that was a great, a great class. Oh, thank you. Your teaching was just fabulous and <laughs> incredibly great. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I was thanks. very happy to see the way you teach. You are comfortable. I like that. Yes, I like to teach. Yeah. And the class was smart, you know? Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, uh, what do you remember most about the lesson? I remember being a little bit anxious about this being the last day before spring break, how attentive they were going to be. And I guess I was pleasantly surprised in that they did pay attention and they did respond. Other than that, um, I remember that the students, most of them were attentive to the point where I expected them to be. Wonderful. And what was the lesson about? What poetry. was the lesson about? Poetry, fixed poetry, and particularly the sonnet, which is difficult for students because most sonnets are written by people like Shakespeare, John Donne, etc in language that is not easy for them to understand, but we were concentrating more on the form and the qualities, characteristics of a sonnet. And what does uh, this lesson fit into the curriculum? Well, the second semester, their senior year, we focus on literature. And literature, besides the novel and the short story, has poetry as a part of it as well. Some students love poetry, others hate it. So I try to introduce it and discuss it without mutilating the poetry so they can still enjoy it as well as understand the concept. So it's just part of our literary curriculum. So does it, does it uh, relate to the district curriculum? Is there anything kind of relationship with the district curriculum? Well, I think that literature is always a part of English, whether it's language arts in the elementary schools, or literature, or English as we call it in the high school. But it's used not only as, um, it's kind of like teaching lessons of life, literature can, and poetry is kind of like song. You put it to music and poetry becomes a song. So not only is, is literature entertaining, I think it also teaches lessons, causes students to stop and think about the important things in life, how they would react to them, the beauty of words and ideas. Good, good. And just in brief, uh, tell me a little bit of uh, how do you feel the lesson went? Okay. Okay, in that many of the students um, really want to learn and whatever is being taught, they are willing to put forth the effort. There's a certain percentage, a small percentage, or no matter what it is, they're going to give me minimal attention. And I try to teach to all of the students who want to learn and not to let students who are less interested get in the way of their learning. And any kind of distraction that these students um, provide, I try to minimize that and simply, you know, go on with what I want the students to learn. Good students have the right to learn, and these other students do not have the right to interfere with that. So I try to keep them out of the picture as much as I can, and certainly they're there to learn as well. If they choose not to, I can't control that. I can only provide it for them, try to encourage them, and in much of my teaching, I try to make a practical application as to why they should learn it, especially with writing, or with thinking, or with analyzing, in-depth thinking, critiquing. All of these skills are 
necessary for our students. Uh, did, did the students accomplish uh, what you aimed at? Most of them, I think, understood because they had the papers in front of them, the characteristics of the poetry. So if they followed along, and as I looked out and watched, most of them were following along, and I said, you can take notes, so if they jotted down, it's going to help them remember this information. Did I have a 100%? Uh, no, I don't know as one ever does, 100%. But I think if I were to ask the students again tomorrow, the majority of them, I think, would know what a sonnet is, what limerick is, characteristics of it, etc. I think they would be okay with it. Wonderful. Uh, I absorbed, I absorbed the almost more than 40 minutes teaching, you teaching. Uh, there are some of the things which I like and you did a good job. Oh, thank you. Did you. a good job, and uh, uh, about eighty percent things went on well. And uh, uh, there are some of the things I liked most. Uh, you were assigning the students to read. Mm -hmm. It's something good, mm -hmm. you know. You could really see how students were trying to prepare their their lines, you know, and some of them didn't read very well too. Yeah, and you told them to repeat again. I remember. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. But, but I like the way you were assigning them, just to keep them on the track, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the way you were moving, you know, the way you were moving, trying to control, just mm -hmm. moving around, just mm -hmm. to attract their attention, you know, just walk around and just make them alive, you know. And I remember you tried your level best to just make them have a good learning environment. You know, there were some, some of the students passing around and you got there and shut the door. Mm -hmm. That was good. That's a positive element. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you, are, you are flexible. Another positive thing is that uh, the way you asked questions. Uh, you had uh, these kind of, they call these reflective questions. Mm -hmm. You make them think. Mm -hmm. Those are critical, you make them have this critical thinking. Also, there is this positive thing with you. Uh, you call students by name. You call students by name. Now, when you call students, this is good. So he feels good. Oh, he, she knows me. Mm -hmm. oh, and, mm -hmm. and you seem to know almost all the students and uh, that's why I am pleased with that. I think that is important, and you probably, as a teacher, realize that also. Yeah. Yeah. It does reassure them that you know them as an individual, right. not just a lump of humanity. Right, mm -hmm. right, 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 right. Yeah. And of course, calling the students by names, you attract their engagement and uh, interaction. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. um, there are just a few things which are. Uh, uh, of course, as a teacher, uh, need to, to correct and uh, just a few mm -hmm. of these. And, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think the first one is this, that uh, the lesson plan. Of all the facts you gave me, uh, I didn't see the lesson plan. And uh, this is always very important for a teacher. Just if you have a lesson plan, the lesson plan guides you and keeps you on the track. But for you, I know you are an, a, you're a veteran teacher. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you have almost, you know your stuff. And, uh, yeah, but uh, it's good that you have a lesson plan. And, uh, I think it makes a difference also if you teach the same lesson plan two or three periods a day. Right. right. Because the first time you teach it, you kind of say, how did this go? What do I need to adjust? Yeah, yeah. Next time you fix it. So. I, I do that sometimes, but that's a good suggestion. Yeah, good, good. And I was worried too, uh, anyway, this depends on the way you prepare your lesson. Uh, it, for the, all of the, of the period, you did not use the, the technology. 
some of the students uh, like the visual thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, you can just visit one of the website about poems and you just uh, bring, let's say, the pictures of the poets, you know, uh, or some of the poems that uh, the sonnet kind of thing. And, oh, really? That looks like this one. Or you might get some one of the website which has uh, these people singing like those kind of uh, those uh, form of poem you, you were uh, trying to introduce to students. I think that could be really good. I think students also need a, a, a little bit uh, more of uh, uh, class activities. You know, class activities. Uh, this was good. Do you ask them? One, one, uh, one of the students, of course, had to recite his own poem. And this was great. I was worried. How could he remember? And even the other kids cheered on him and they were, wow, you know? And that was from a year ago. I think that's why they, they were yeah. surprised. Yes. And, you know, next time maybe uh, you can uh, just even ask them to compose even three to four lines of poems just to see whether uh, 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 they follow, you know, to you track their learning just to keep students on the track as I told you the movements are very very important there was one guy who was sleeping somewhere there behind you know, I think he's like Chinese or Japanese mm. yeah I just concentrated on him like three minutes sleeping and but of course when you teach and you move around and maybe you just touch on them and then you move around and this also keeps them to to be to follow and uh, just when a student puts his or her head down I try to watch them for a while and I remember one case when I went over and asked a student not in that class and they said I have a terrible migraine headache I'm just trying to rest okay then I understood why he had his head right. down yeah on all you are teaching what was incredibly great it was incredibly <laughs> Thank great you. Uh, you could really see how students were trying to follow you and this attracted me to mm -hmm. keep up keep up on that and uh, now uh, could you uh, uh, what things could you have done to increase maybe students achievement well I think uh, I don't mean to dwell on the particular day but the attentiveness I think waned on that day because their minds were elsewhere and I probably could work with uh, trying to have them imitate a particular poet follow his like Joyce Kilmer's trees write a parody because it's very simple and have them actually write and then try to apply them. And reading, we, we wrote, wrote some limericks and they were just for fun and they enjoyed um, reading those because they were lighthearted and fun. So probably rather than just looking at someone else's writing, try to create their own, or simply a list of rhyming words or imaginative words, you know, kind of like a word bank. If you're going to write about basketball, okay, jot down 10, 15 words that are related to basketball. I think an activity like this would generate some thoughts so they're not simply working on a dry, okay, create, which is difficult for anybody to do. So thank you very much, Mr. Yes, Ludon. yes. And this has been a great lesson to me too, because oh. uh, the way you teach is very great and uh, just only just these few things that we have just uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate your information. Yeah, um, I hope your class will be great. I hope so. Yes, I wish you all the best in your Thank future you. teaching. Thank you very much. So, and you, you. And you as well. Bye-bye.